St. Tammany's success with IPM prompted State Representative Eddie Dino to introduce legislation to mandate that schools throughout the state implement some form of IPM, along with better record keeping of which pesticides were used and more precautions about when they were used. Uh, I was contacted by a group of citizens that were basically uh, a coalition of um, constituencies in St. Tammany Parish. Uh, some uh, governmental groups like uh, the League of Women Voters, there were also a group of parents, there were also environmental groups that had all were aware and had come together uh, in my district uh, of the need for reducing the uh, use of toxic chemicals in schools and, and actually had, had done a lot of the legwork with our local school board. So was the program, the local program, up and running at that point? Yeah, the local program uh, had been uh, implemented. I don't recall whether we had gotten some sort of, of uh, state um, allowance for, to do a pilot program uh, and then moved on to a statewide program. I believe that we I believe that we had a, a permission to do uh, a pilot program in St. Tammany Parish, which had been achieved a year or so before. Um, the people that were involved were very knowledgeable, my constituents that were involved mm -hmm. with it. Uh, they had traveled around the country. They had talked to people that already implemented it. Uh, they had figures dealing with um, long-term economy of this type of um, treatment of pests in schools. Mm -hmm. Um, they had th they had done their homework. Was some of this information uh, new to you, uh, surprising to you? Yeah, it, it uh, you know when you're in the legislature and there's there's issues dealing with everything from crime to fiscal policy and and in the environment and education, um, the idea of uh, the importance of limiting the use of pesticides in schools do doesn't present itself every day. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I was pleased that uh, my constituents were, I was proud of my constituents. They were on the cutting edge of what was going on in this area uh, in the state. Describe to us the sequence of events uh, from your standpoint. Uh, did you introduce a bill, uh, get it through committee and things like that? Public hearings were held? Um, well, we began to do some negotiations and make rumblings that we would be introducing this sort of legislation, and it, it, it piqued the ears of, of, of the chemical companies other people that that may not be interested in having the, these laws implemented and, and um, it's important to know that when you do these types of things legislatively Ron that that uh, there are many interests that are involved and uh, for instance the school board association was not for this legislation mm. um, and they viewed it as a, uh, a state government interfering with local education um, and, and you know, there were issues that needed to be that we needed to be sensitive to, uh, and, and take those types of things into account. But yes, and um, the the uh, chemical companies uh, had their own legislation that was purportedly to do the same thing. In fact, my bill is not the bill that passed. Oh, okay. uh, I heavily amended uh, the bill that was uh, put out by the uh, uh, the chemical. And, and, and in the legislative process, and a lot of times those things happen, actually the bill that was proposed by the environmental community even was not the one that passed. Mm -hmm. The one that was proposed by the, um, the chemical interest passed, but in a form that we were very happy with. So it was a long legislative fight, a complicated legislative fight. Sort of a compromise that balanced all the uh, factors. Uh, we were... When we got into it, we were willing to accept the, the legitimate concerns of local school systems as to not feeling that they were being oppressed by the state. But we were not willing to compromise the unfettered use of chemicals at the drop of a hat and with our school children. Mm -hmm. um, we felt that the state had an interest to be sure that the school had been chemical free for 8, 12 hours before children came into the school. Um, we felt that it was necessary that the state monitor the types of chemicals that are used in the schools and, and, um, and also to, to make the policy that the least toxic method of taking care of pesticides 
that we needed a statement that said for the children in their schools in Louisiana, we're going to use the least toxic method to uh, effectively keep pests out of the schools. And a lot of times it's just common sense. You know, one of the things that we have to keep in mind um, when we're advocating these these measures is that not everyone has the same view of pesticides and chemicals that we might have here in St. Tammany Parish or in a suburban area or in a non, let's say, non-agricultural area. Sure. And that people from rural agricultural areas have a totally different view of, of pesticides and chemicals. And, and it's not to say that uh, be judgmental about their views. Uh, because for, for many instances, their livelihood, and they view their livelihood as being dependent on the use of chemicals. Where we have to weigh in is to show that we, ha we have to have responsible use of chemicals, that their viewpoint is not necessarily 100% correct, and except that ours has to be, in some regards, modified for, for a broad use. I mean, for a broad state policy, we can't pull necessarily our perspective on it and say that this is the way that it has to be done. And we have to be sensitive. That's the trick to passing these bills. Uh, one of the areas that were most concerned to the parents was the misuse or the misapplication of pesticides. Uh, applica applicators not following directions. Applicators untrained. Right. Uh, no one keeping tabs on what was being put in the schools. No one keeping tabs of when it was being put in the schools. And this legislation addressed that. Yes. And also, stated that it is our policy that we use the least toxic method to rid the schools of pests. Um, the, the feeling was that there are many types of dangers that can be put in these schools, and it, it, it doesn't make sense to present one danger to get rid of another one. You say it was quite a complicated uh, process getting the legislation passed, and a lot of people had different opinions. Um, was there a point there when every pretty much everyone got on the same track and truly understood the, the goal of this school pesticide bill? Uh, really, it, it was a fight, and we could never get every interest uh, involved to support the measure. Um, there were some chemical interests that had a very um, a strong feeling in support of, the, of our bill because that it was in their interest to have trained, or they felt that it was important to have trained people applying um, the pesticides. And of course, that's in their financial interest because they they train people to apply the pesticides. Mm -hmm. So they want people that have been trained. The, the law require people that are trained to do it because that pr promotes business for them rather than to allow somebody who isn't trained or isn't associated with some sort of um, uh, business that does the application to do it so that there are allies, there are natural allies for these types of measures in the, um, in the chemical industry and in the pesticide industry. And what we were able to do was to bring all the possible forces to bear that would be in support of this measure, environmental, chemical, uh, educators, parents, uh, and were able to pass the bill. But no, the, I don't believe the School Board Association ever supported the bill. Uh, I don't believe that the large chemical companies ever supported the bill. Mm. Uh, and it was a long, drawn-out legislative fight. It wasn't as simple as you thought it might be at the beginning. No, it, it really <laughs> wasn't. It, it was not. Uh, the committee hearings were, were volatile. Um, it was amazing that a measure like this could become so complicated. Was there any grassroots support, uh, petitions being delivered and things like that? Uh, the League of Women Voters was very supportive. Um, our local parents were very supportive, and they networked to other school systems uh, around the state. Uh, and, and those types of things helped. Uh, mm -hmm. It worked out well. Have you had any positive feedback from groups? What, what The feedback that I get is that many of these groups are continuing their efforts. Um, this was viewed as a first step. Mm. Of course, that's what that's what the opponent said too. But uh, uh, they have they've honed their research. Uh, I, 
I expect that we will see more of this type of legislation in the future. There's more research going on. So. There's a lot more research going on. There's a lot more uh, treatment methods for pests that don't involve mm -hmm. chemicals. I, I think that probably when this area is looked back several years from now, it'll be what it will be perceived as is a door open rather than an issue resolved. Any place where people are living and working and playing and whatever, that we need to keep that as safe from foreign influences as, as possible. And, and I consider pesticides, while they're certainly necessary in many instances, need to be understood that there's, there's limited there's limitations to its uh, use and that it uh, can be harmful in 